Let's talk about some eye anatomy. Now in this video I'm going to go over some anatomy of the front part of the eye and some of the microscopic stuff you're going to see. And I'm also going to go over some CT scans and go over the muscles of the eye, the uh, bones of the eye, and read some of this stuff for you. So let's go ahead and get started with the, uh, the basics, which would be the external exam. Now the first thing you're going to see in an eye exam is the conjunctiva. And the conjunctiva is just a layer of tissue that sits on top of the eye and it's clear. And it sits right here on the white part of the eye. Now the conjunctiva is not white, it's clear. You're seeing the white of the eye underneath. And the conjunctiva is a layer of tissue that protects the eye and also creates a surface uh, underneath. It actually loops underneath the inside of the eyelid and forms the back of the eyelids here. And explains why if you say have a contact lens that slips down, why it doesn't go behind your eyeball, it gets trapped by the conjunctiva here. And people that get conjunctivitis get a infection of the, this layer of tissue. Now the conjunctiva actually inserts right here at the limbus uh, where it becomes clear cornea. And that's the, uh, the front of the eye, of course. And if we take a picture of this, we see uh, here's the limbus and the conjunctiva is a thin layer of tissue here and there's actually little blood vessels running through the conjunctiva and when you get say a conjunctivitis these blood vessels will dilate and get very red and that's why your eyelids pink now the eyelids are actually uh, formed by you could really break it down into two layers there's an anterior lamella which has the uh, the muscles and things like that and there's a posterior lamella which is formed by the tarsal plate this tarsal plate is a, uh, a layer of tissue that's somewhat tough and uh, gives the eyelids its shape and things like that and some of the muscles that open and close the eye insert on this tarsal plate. Uh, inside the tarsal plate are the meibomian glands. I've actually drawn this wrong. The glands actually sit inside of the, uh, the plate and they squirt oil through little pores right here at the base of the eyelids into the tear film. And if we take a photo we can see little pores here uh, right along the edge of the tear of the uh, eyelids and oil is squirted out these uh, out these pores into the tears and this oil is real important to keep the tears from evaporating too quickly. A chalazion can occur if uh, one of those little pores is clogged up you can get a backflow of uh, lipid into the gland and you can get a granulomatous reaction. It's not an infection but uh, it is something we see quite commonly in ophthalmology. It's one of the bread and butter things that we see and people will have a hard lump on their eyelid. It's not tender, it's not infected, but uh, they usually won't go away on their own. And we have to actually flip the eyelid over and use a little uh, scalpel to uh, incise and drain these things. Now that's much different than a sty, which is more like a pimple. It's a little small localized infection, which is usually self-limited, typically red and very tender. The two main eyelid muscles you need to know about are the abicularis, and these are the muscles that are formed in a circular pattern around the eyes and actually close the eye and it's controlled by cranial nerve 7 so if you have say a Bell's palsy where you lose the facial muscles on uh, the side these patients have a hard time closing their eye and that can create a lot of exposure problems the other muscle is the levator palpebrae which is controlled by cranial nerve 3 and this muscle is actually a ribbon that attaches to the top of the tarsal plate that we saw before and it pulls the eye open and uh, if you have a cranial nerve 3 palsy then these people have a, a totic eyelid a very low eye. The mnemonic I use to remember what nerve does what is cranial nerve 3 opens the eye and you can think of that like a 3 like a pillar and cranial nerve 7 closes the eye and you can think of that like a uh, fish hook. The lacrimal system controls uh, the tears and the tear drainage now mo the majority of tears are actually uh, produced by accessory glands up in the conge, up in the fornix usually, but uh, a lot of our reflux tearing is produced by the lacrimal gland up here in the corner, which squirts tears into the tear film here. The tears then uh, are drained out of small little punctum down a canulicular system into a, uh, a sac, and then down a nasal lacrimal duct where it drains into the uh, inferior meatus which is underneath the inferior turbinate. Here's a video just to show you what those punctum look like. They're very small and you've got two of them, one on the bottom, one on top. 
and uh, here's a close-up video of, of one of them. Here's a, another patient. This one's a little bit more obvious. Now, people have different size uh, punctum. Sometimes they don't have punctum. Uh, people who have chronic dry eyes, we can actually put a little plug inside of this thing, and uh, that way their tears don't drain too quickly, and that seems to alleviate a lot of their symptoms. Uh, here's a patient who had the, o the opposite. She came in complaining of tearing, and under exam you can see that she has an eyelash that's actually stuck uh, in the punctum on that side. So we just pulled that out, and her symptoms went away. Uh, here's an axial CT. I wanted to show you this because the uh, the tears from the eye drain into the nose and they drain down the nasolacrimal duct. And if we start up here at the eye and move our way down, this is right here uh, medially, and follow this down, you can actually see a little hole here, and that's the nasolacrimal duct, just a little circle. And as you go down, it drains into the nose, and here it is draining into the nose. And you can imagine if someone has a lot of facial fractures or uh, some type of dysgenesis of the bones that this could be uh, could be broken and that can cause a lot of problems with tearing. If you do have a uh, lid laceration, the most w worrisome area really is medially because you can cut right through the cannulicular uh, structures and this needs to be repaired surgically where we uh, will actually run a tube through the system and leave that tube there for while everything heals up around it in order to keep this uh, this drainage patent. But let's go on to the globe because that's what we're uh, going to be talking about for the most part. The uh, 